how do you find the routes, where to record, how to record, and yeah, do you have a plan for a city or a site to make it? Well, uh, the plan is for me like a composition. There should be interesting sounds to hear, but it shouldn't be uh, all the same. So I have to find uh, parts of the work which are more quiet and others which are more intense. And every city is different, so I have to find a way which is to a portrait of the city. Um, I know the places which are full of uh, electromagnetic waves, it's shopping malls, it's where the money is, it's where um, sometimes the police is, or where it's big traffic places, stations, so on. But then sometimes you find things you don't know where they come from, from the earth or a corner, and I, I like to include these places as well. And um, when then I collect these places and I try to, to walk, to make a walk which is interesting, because it should be interesting to look at things as well. I mean, you are not walking with your eyes closed. Um, afterwards, yeah, I have often the curators or who invites me to come with me to test it again. So it's, it's a kind of, of process which takes two, three, four days and it makes me know every city very, very well. Yeah, after going through the, all the places. Yes. Um, but have you been um, uh, twice at the same place, yes. which uh, has different uh, sounds after all? Yes, the sounds change very quickly. Um, one example is Kortrijk in Belgium. Um, they bought four permanent sound walks. One is mine, uh, which means I have the headphones and the itinerary. And um, they changed in the inside of the city. They built a huge shopping center, but they left the walls outside from the old houses. So everything seems the same, but the infrastructure changed. It's not only the shops inside, but it's too that the people moved out. They had um, places for the cars to come, for the traffic and so on. So it, it looks almost the same and the sounds are radically different. And I, I had several things like that and of course, um, other things is that models of, let's say, television sets change. You don't have them anymore. So new uh, um, huge LED plasma or something monitors sound different uh, than an old one from five years ago. Um, <clears throat> but um, I have done several walks in Berlin where I'm staying. And um, Berlin is not changing so much. It's very old fashioned still. Um, I made a walk for in Bangkok and I made it in every detail. It was fantastic, I, I thought. And then they told me just before they were putting down the whole building, which I had centered about around. So I had to find a new place within a month and it, that was very difficult for me. So I'm always trying to find the route not too far away from the realization of the walk, because otherwise things might happen. I, I, my last question. Yeah. Do you think, because uh, you started to be researchers uh, with electrical walks quite long time yeah. ago, and uh, do you think that there is a constant, there is a rise of the constant noise, like in the last decade or maybe five years or three years, but it's uh, yeah, like I would say fifteen years. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, it's not only uh, noise, I mean, th the, the variety of sounds, the, the density of sounds, and the kind of sound changes. Um, as you um, maybe heard in the lecture, um, the analog sounds like that of old trumps are quite musical. Um, sounds of um, digital communication of machinery and so on um, are more sharp, more rhythmic, and we have more and more of these sounds. And that's why I had to modify the headphones as well, because I go, now I get less of the really deep frequencies and I opened up to the higher spectrum, uh, just following the kind of development we have of electromagnetic waves and translation into sound.